Hello everyone and welcome back to Hippie Flower Girl. Thank you so much for joining me again. Today we are going to learn how to make argar, sterilize argar and pour the argar as well as inoculate it. So if you want to skip the making of the argar and you've already done that, please check this timestamp because that is where I will be inoculating the argar. Okay, so uh, let's get started. So today, the argar recipe that I will be using is called LMEA, or Light Malt Extract Argar. So what I use is light malt extract, argar, uh, water, and food coloring. So the reason why I start with argar instead of directly inoculating the grain spawn jars is because when I start with argar, I am able to have a cleaner environment and I'm also able to select the mycelium that is growing the fastest or the strongest. And this just helps me throughout the whole process because my mycelium will colonize faster and it will prevent more contaminants from happening. Okay, so let me talk through the supplies and show you what they look like. I'm also just going to give a brief explanation on why I use them. So first we have our glass petri dishes. You can also buy plastic petri dishes or you can buy pre-filled petri dishes. The reason why I choose glass petri dishes is because they're reusable, they don't melt in the pressure cooker and yeah. That's actually it. Of our foil, the foil is used to sterilize the petri dishes as well as the agar. So here we have the light malt extract. It is in a liquid form, but if you find the powdered form, then that works much better. Um, I do adjust the recipe for the liquid light malt extract. So the light malt extract provides the nutrients that the mycelium will feed on. Then here we have our agar agar powder. And this provides a firm but moist surface for the mycelium to grow on. And then over here we have some food coloring. This is completely optional. Over here we have the glass bottle in which I will prepare the argar and then sterilize it. Um, you can use a proper laboratory bottle. I don't because they're expensive and I found this Starbucks bottle for cheap and it works very well. We have the micropore tape, which helps for gas exchange and to keep any microbes out and so it doesn't infect your argar if you leave the argar. We have our rubber band that will secure the foil once it goes over the bottle. You need a pot or a pressure cooker. So in this video, I'm just using a pot because I was too lazy to go dig out my pressure cooker and use that. Um, it works with both. The timing is the same. Everything is basically the same. You need an oven and a stove. So you will sterilize your Petri dishes in the oven and you will use your stove to boil the water in your pressure cooker or in your pot. To inoculate your Petri dishes, you need your filled Petri dishes. You need a still air box in which you can do everything so it doesn't get contaminated. Then you need your liquid culture or your multi-spore syringe, depending on what you're working with. So then we need gloves and rubbing alcohol. This just helps to sterilize everything. Some paper towels to wipe everything down with the rubbing alcohol. And then some parafilm that will seal up the Petri dishes after you've inoculated them. Let's sterilize our Petri dishes. So first I will get all my petri dishes, I'll make sure that they are clean. I stack my petri dishes, I make sure that the top part is at the top and the bottom part is at the bottom and then I just stack them like that. Um, this helps because when you pour your argar you will remove the top one each time. But I'll show you that a bit later. Okay, so then I usually stack eight petri dishes and the reason why I choose eight is because um, I can only fit eight between my thumb and my middle finger which makes it easier to work with and also when I'm doing the agar pour it makes it easier. So um, I will wrap them in foil and I will close the edges and then I will put them in the oven for 200 degrees celsius 
or 390 degrees Fahrenheit for 20 minutes. Leave them in the oven to cool down um, until I can use them or until my argar is ready. Uh, please be careful, they are hot. Now let's make the LMEA or light malt extract argar. I use a scale because it's just easier. So I grab my scale and my glass. Then I put five grams of argar argar powder in the glass. If you are working with powdered light malt extract, add 10 grams. If you are working with liquid light malt extract, I added 15 grams. I will add 250 mils of boiling water. The reason why I'm choosing 250 mils is because my bottle is 250 mils. If you need more, just double the recipe as needed. And I will put the food coloring in and I will mix it all together, making sure that there are no granules and that everything is dissolved properly. And then I pour it into my bottle and I put the lid on. I will then use a knife to stab a hole in the bottle. Um, don't make it too big. It's just for gas exchange and so that there isn't too much pressure build up when you are pressure cooking it. After that, I will put some micro pour tape over the hole. This just prevents any microbes from entering. After that, I will put some aluminum foil over the top and secure it with a rubber band. I don't tighten the lid completely. I have it slightly open, so like just a little bit. And this just helps um, to prevent too much pressure from building up. And guess who we have here again? Little winter cat, she came inside. Hi kitty, she looks very, very annoyed. Okay, then I put my pot or my pressure cooker on the stove. I will put in a paper towel. The reason why I do this is I just don't like the glass touching the pot. Um, it sometimes discolors the pot or the glass. Then I fill the pot about halfway with hot water or boiling water or cold water. It doesn't really matter. And so my bottle, if it stands upright, it doesn't fit into the pot. So I just put an empty jar in the pot as well and then lean my bottle against it. And then I'll put the lid on and I will turn it, the stove on at a high heat. You should only start the timer when the water is boiling. If you're using a pressure cooker, once your pressure cooker has reached 15 PSI, that is when you start your timer. So you are going to pressure cook or steam bath the argar for 90 minutes. Okay, um, I would say about every, if you are doing the steam bath, every 20 minutes to half an hour, just check that there is enough water in your pot. Um, this, if there isn't, just add more water, preferably boiling, so it doesn't decrease from the amount of time that it gets to steam bath. If your pressure cooker gets quiet and you don't hear that bubbling sound anymore, that means that there is no water in your pressure cooker and you should stop, uh, put some more water in it and repeat the process. Uh, please do not burn your pressure cooker. We have sterilized our argar. It is time to fill the Petri dishes. So first we need to create a sterile environment so that when we fill the Petri dishes, no unwanted contaminations get in. So what I do is I get my mushroom table and then I will put some alcohol soaked paper towels on the surface and then I will put my still air box over that. Then what I will do is I will wipe down the still air box on the inside, making sure that there's no dust or grime or contaminations. And then I will put my Petri dishes into the still air box. I will put the argar into the still air box. I will wipe down the bottle with a paper towel and rubbing alcohol just to make sure that the bottle on the outside is also clean. And I will spray some rubbing alcohol in the still air box and leave it to set. 
The reason why I do this is so that any airborne bacteria or contaminations get trapped and pushed down and then they get trapped on the paper towels. So the reason why I also do this and why I let it sit for 10 to 15 minutes is when I remove my agar from the pot, it is still quite hot and I can't handle it. Um, you should start pouring the argar when you're able to handle the bottle, but when the argar is still liquid. So it will be hot, but make sure it's not too hot that you burn yourself. Okay, so now let's look at how to pour the argar. So first what I do is I remove the foil from the petri dishes and I make sure that my stacks are aligned and that all the petri dishes are in a straight column. Then with my dominant hand, I will remove the lid off the bottle and I will take the agar mixture. I will remove the top lid of the first petri dish and I will pour the agar in about halfway to two thirds of the way. Then I will put the lid back down and then I will pick up the lid of the second petri dish and I'll pour the agar in the bottom. Put the lid down, pick up the lid of the third petri dish, pour the agar and repeat that until I have filled all the petri dishes. This is also the reason why I only stack eight at a time because I don't have the best finger dexterity. So sometimes the plates will slip or they will slide off. Like so then I will spray everything down again and I will leave the argar to completely solidify. It is important that you make sure your argar is solid. Let's inoculate our Petri dishes. What you will need is a multi-spore syringe or liquid culture. Today I'm working with liquid culture and the reason why is because I only get liquid culture syringes from my spore supplier. You will prep the still air box by wiping down the signs. You will put down some paper towels that have been soaked in rubbing alcohol. You will put your petri dishes in the still air box along with your spore syringe or liquid culture syringe. Yes, throughout this whole process, you should be wearing gloves. If you have stored your argar and you're using it later on, then when you put them into the still air box, I would suggest wiping down each petri dish. And this just helps to remove any contaminations that there might be. And I will also wipe down my syringe. So what I do is I, I keep them in stacks, I take off the lid, I spray in the liquid culture or spore solution, and then I move the petri dish off of the stack. And I continue until all my petri dishes have been filled with this liquid culture. So you can do like two drops, three drops. Um, sometimes it's a bit difficult because they get stuck. So I usually do between two to three to five drops. Um, the amount of petri dishes that I was able to fill with 250 mils of argar was 14, um, but I made a mistake. So I only have about 10 petri dishes that I inoculated because in two petri dishes, the argar didn't set for some reason. And then I dropped two in the still air box. So I didn't want to use them because I thought they would be contaminated. So once you have inoculated your petri dishes with your spore solution, you can use your parafilm to seal up the petri dish. So here is the parafilm that I used and I found it best to fold your if you fold your parafilm horizontally, it seems to stretch better than if you fold it vertically. I will take the petri dishes and I will put them in a cupboard. Your spores don't need sunlight to germinate and they don't need sunlight to colonize. So you can just leave them in a cupboard until you are ready to use them. Um, you should see some growth around 7 to 14 days. Um, it also depends on the temperature. So if it's a little bit colder where you live, it's going to take longer. And if it's hotter where you are, then it will be a bit faster. So, so far I don't have any growth, but if you would like to see the growth, please follow me on Instagram where I will be posting updates. 
Thank you so much for everyone that watched this video. I really appreciate it. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any tips or tricks or anything that you would like to share, please comment them down below. I love to hear from you guys. And then if you want to follow along with some more mushroom related content, please subscribe and follow me on Instagram and check out my blog if you want to see the written version of this video. I will also list all my supplies and where I got them. So if you're a South African, this is the place to be. Okay, so thank you so much, everybody. I'll see you next time. Bye.